Well, hello everyone. Uh, I've been reading your posts on Facebook, and instead of starting with 150 gold, I understand that you guys have decided to sell some of your starting equipment to boost that amount quite a bit. Just a quick recap, the 150 gold came from the items that were collected during the first introductory adventure. But now I understand that three different uh, heroes would like to sell some stuff. Let's take a look at that. It seems that Tomble is willing to sell his knives and his lucky charm for 25 gold pieces each. So those will be removed from his inventory. Understand that uh, Ashrion is willing to sell the wooden shield and the mace for 25 gold pieces each. And the party's knight, uh, Sindril, is actually willing to part with her shield for another 25 gold pieces. Well, we've got 150. That's going to be 25. That's going to be 175. 200, 225, 250, 275 gold. 275 gold. So let's just scratch through this 150 and we'll put 275 gold. Well now I understand that that gives you enough gold to buy the crossbow, which I initially thought was far beyond your budget, and it allows you to buy this iron battle axe. So if I read your posts correctly, the crossbow is going to go to Tomble, and the iron battle axe will go to Ashrion. Well, with that gold uh, being spent, we'll just mark through here, and we're kind of down to, uh, down to zero hero gold. I also read the posts about which quest we ought to do next. We've completed First Blood, the introductory quest, and that leaves us with one, two, three, four, five. Uh, five other quests, and then there's an interlude and a uh, finale. So let's try to choose one of these. And, and there's been a few statements from people that are both playing in the game and for fans that are, that are watching us play that since the Fat Goblin may have been covered by uh, uh, Crits Happen, you might want to check out Tox and his playthrough there. Uh, did a great job with that. Why don't we look to play one of those other four? Why don't we just go down? We'll think about this castle one is number one. This one is number two, the Masquerade number three, and Death on the Wing number four. One, two, three, four. I'm going to roll this ancient little d4 I have. Let's see what we come up with. When I roll it, the number is going to be on the bottom. So one, two, three, four. What did we get? In the shadows there, we can see we got a one. So, not the Fat Goblin, but the one directly underneath it. Castle... is it Darien? Darien? We shall see. Let's take a look at that one. Well, I found the adventure here, or the quest, in the quest book. Let's take a look at it. If you remember from the first Blood quest, the heroes were traveling toward Arryn, and they came across a caravan guard who was uh, wounded and he was ambushed and then the parties fought against uh, Mauler and his goblin minions and they were trying to lead an attack on Arryn. Then Mauler was defeated and he said that though we may die we are but servants of the almighty overlord our master will triumph in the end Arryn will fall. Well, Let's take a look at this campaign overview it said the twin baronies of Wren and Carthage lie on the outskirts of Terranoth. And I'm sorry if I'm slaughtering these names. I'm just the first time I've uh, really read some of them. 
Anyway, these are far from the free cities. Baron Grigory often hosts his friend and ally, Baron Zacharith, at his seat in the capital city of Arran, and over the years, the two baronies have aided one another in times of both war and peace. But now both baronies are in peril. Monsters stalk the forests and mountains, moving with more purpose and coordination than ever before. A new overlord is rising. <laughs> A wicked and dangerous foe hidden in the shadows, manipulating events according to his master plan. If the overlord isn't stopped, Wren and Carthage alike will fall into darkness, and the rest of Terranoth will fo uh, soon follow. Fortunately, a small group of heroes are on the road to Arryn. Well, I guess the adventurers made it here, after cutting off the, the goblins uh, and Mahler's assault. And I think they're going to have to travel out and along this path, all the way over here to this castle. And let's try to find out why we're going there. It says, On the advice of Baron Grigory, you have traveled down river in search of Sir Palamon, one of the shadow binders. As you approach, what is that? Daringtown. Daringtown. In the evening, you hear a strangled cry for help. The Overlord's minions are already here. The town is under a stealthy assault. The castle must be next. Your guide informs you that there are four beacons throughout the village, which may be lit to alert Castle Darion to the danger. If you can light all four beacons, the Overlord's nighttime raid will be foiled, and the castle warned. Should the fires of the Overlord dispatch all of the, let's say, should the forces of the Overlord dispatch all of the remaining villagers, however, they will surely march straight to the castle, and you will be too late to stop them. For the monsters, for this particular quest, it says two open groups, so there could be a great deal of variety uh, of monsters that we can use, or that I can use. Uh, to fight against the heroes. So I'll think about that. The setup uh, looks like you're placing down the different tiles. Uh, looks like an indoor kind of quest. There are villager tokens and special rules. The red objective tokens are beacons and the heroes must light all four beacons to win. As an action, a hero adjacent to a beacon may light it. After a beacon is lit, remove the token from the map. A hero adjacent to a beacon may also attempt to light it speedily on his turn by testing either, I think that's lore or is that awareness, without spending an action. If he passes, the, the beacon is lit. This test may be attempted once per hero turn. Villagers block movement and line of sight. Treat them as hero figures with the following exceptions. They cannot recover health by any means. They are immune to all conditions and they pass any attribute test they are called upon to make. When a villager is defeated, place its token in the overlord's play area. They will be important during Encounter 2. Well, let's take a brief look at the map. So I'll need to set up this map uh, for you. It looks like the entrance is over there. Uh, there's really nothing to be hidden from the players. Uh, all of this information is, is public knowledge. So that's the map that I'll be setting up for you. There's a little bit of information on the villager, uh, health of 6, speed 3, and, and a gray defense die. The villagers activate at the end of the last hero turn each round. They are controlled by the hero player who takes his turn last. When activated, each villager may perform a move action and may either open or close a single adjacent door. Villagers cannot perform other actions. 
Reinforcements. Okay, this must be for the Overlord. At the end of each Overlord turn, he may place one monster from one of his open groups on either the entrance or the exit, respecting group limits. Victory. If the heroes light all four of the beacons, you read this following passage, and they win this encounter. If the Overlord defeats all of the villagers, you read this one. The Overlord wins the encounter. I believe these icons at the top, those three symbols, represent the monster groups that I can choose. Uh, so if I choose a monster to face off against the heroes, that monster card needs to have uh, one of these three symbols on it. So I'm, I'm going to wrap up this video. Um, I need to choose my monsters, set up the map for you guys, get the figures out, and I need to look over the travel rules. I understand that traveling from one location to another involves a bit of uh, card playing and uh, I guess we'll see how that works, either for or against the players, until you get to your destination, which is over there. But anyway, uh, join me over at Facebook and leave your, uh, your comments there, especially players who are playing with me. Leave your comments there, and I'll, I'll find them. But of course, anyone is free to comment on the video, and uh, let me know your thoughts on this. I'm looking forward to getting it started.